Hi everyone, George here from Locked on Art, and welcome to part 3 of my Marta 3 full build. In the last video I concentrated on detailing out the fighting compartment and building the main gun. In this video I'm going to be concentrating on the fenders and accessories, the tracks, and then adding in the final finishing details. So starting off with the fenders, so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put all the clamps and brackets on with the tools and the spare tracks and then mount it to the tank. I'm just going to solder together the corners of the wee storage basket. That's how it's looking now, it's been sanded. For the wire cutters end cap holders, I'm just going to mold those on the sprue. I think that would be easier than trying to do it separately.
So as you can see here, the jack block needs a bit of work doing to it. The block was made up of a few pieces of wood and then it was held together with some steel straps. I'm going to score some lines in it to simulate the pieces of wood. I have a strip of brass here that I'm going to use for the brackets. And I'm just going to use a pin to make some indents for the nail heads. There was a bolt attached to the fender that went through the middle of the block and then it was secured on with a wing nut. So for the bolt itself I'm using a small brass tube for stability and inside that is a 0.3mm brass rod which will be seen coming up through the jack block and that's what I'm going to put the wing nut over. Now for the wing nut I wanted to actually put that over the rod and the only drill bit small enough to go through the middle of it was 0.3 millimeters so that's why I chose that um, particular size and after a couple of attempts it wasn't really working so I went a different way and I've drilled through one of these bolt pieces and then I've cut the sides off the wing nut and stuck them on there so I'll be able to cut this off and then that wing nut can go over the rod The right side fender there's a lot more work involved. A lot of the brackets and braces are not accurate to the actual vehicle. So I'm going to be building the whole lot from scratch. Starting with the hammer and the crowbar. Now the hammer had a wee uh, base plate that it sat in. So I've scratched out a wee template here. And then I'm going to make space for the sides and then I can fold those up. I have some plastic card here that I'm going to use as the base for the little tray.
So for the straps I'm just using thin strips of masking tape and to that I'm adding some photo etch buckles. Now for the cleaning rods, I'm not going to be using the parts provided in the kit. These two are stuck together, and this one here is warped. Plus it's missing a few details, like the end caps. So instead, I've gone and bought some brass tubes. This is going to be represent the wood. It's 1mm and 0.8mm on the inside. This brass tube will represent the end caps, which is go inside the other tube. 0.8 millimeters and 0.4 on the inside so that's a thicker tube and for the screw at the end of the cap I'm just going to use a 0.4 millimeter brass wire So that's the three cleaning rods done now and in theory they should be able to connect into each other. And here you can see the cleaning rod stretched out full next to the main gun. And a quick comparison of my versions next to the ones that came in the kit. So as I was getting ready to put on the cleaning rod brackets, I realized that these brackets were in the wrong place. So I've since corrected it, and now there's room for the cleaning rod brackets to go. Now the straps for these brackets have been made the same way as these ones. I've just have them in two pieces. These are going to be stuck on either side of here.
So I was having a closer look at the tracks that were provided and I decided I wasn't going to use them and instead I went out and bought a set of frill model metal tracks so basically inside what you get is two sets of tracks you get uh, some metal drive sprockets and a bunch of wire to link them all together and they've also included some end caps as well they're very nice looking tracks, the detail in there is very sharp they also have cast markings on the sides got some nice recesses there for the teeth and all the holes are pre-drilled the drive sprocket is also very nice some nice sharp detail there again not sure whether I'm going to use these or the dragon ones they are different in size and I'll just have to see which one fits better so I'm going to be using these for the spare tracks as well and since they're so small and fiddly I've made a simple jig to work on them you can feed them through here one at a time and then they're held firmly in place which lets me clean out the holes put the pins in and then put the end caps on. So here's a closer view of how the jig works. There's a space there for one of the guide horns and the bottom of the track and these are just fed through. Now rather than trying to glue on these end pieces to their pins I've actually found a better way and that is to add the pin and then to add a brass tube over the top of it and then I just cut it off to size I'm just going to use this strip of brass to make the brackets for the spare tracks. So I'm just going to line that up with the track and I'm going to mark out the holes with a pin. So now I need to work out where I'm going to put these screws onto the fender and I've temporarily glued the brackets onto the spare track
And of course the all-important nut to hold everything into place. Now I also wanted to put some tracks on the very front of the tank and I found this piece in the kit. The instructions have it not being used and it requires a wee bit of modification. So first I'm going to take off those end pieces and replace them with some photo etch parts. need to make a place for the bolt to fit into. Just making a wee bracket there for the other side. Now for the rear tail lights I'm going to be adding some electrical wires and I just need to drill a hole for those. And I need to drill holes into the lights themselves. So what I'm using for the wires is a 0.4mm copper wire. Now for the front light, and I don't need to worry about wires for this one, because all the wires are internal.
Now these seats here are lacking any detail and I'm going to add some padded leather cushions just using Tamiya's epoxy putty. Now these seats were hinged and I'm going to be using some old photo etch parts for the hinges. I'm just going to add a wee bit of detail to the periscope hatches.
So there you have it, the Mata 3 is complete. It's been an unusually long build, but this small tank destroyer's design has so much crammed into it, and I wanted to recreate as many details and moving parts as I could, to give it that realistic and authentic look. In part 4 I'll be doing the painting and weathering process, and I'll also be doing an interesting and unusual camouflage pattern. So please subscribe if you haven't already so you get notified for that one. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video guys, and until next time, thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.